hello friends this is uh, sanoba from iit bombay uh, in the next 30 minutes i'm going to cover a very interesting topic that is data visualization this is the outline uh, initially i'll talk about what is visualization then uh, there are many applications so mainly i'll focus on one of its application that is data visualization then we'll uh, see what are the different techniques uh, as how to cover or uh, show the data then uh, we'll see uh, some of the tools that is uh, uh, available and what are the uh, technique or what are the uh, thing that they use uh, in those tools that is canvas and svg tag so we'll uh, see some of the demos so that you have an idea of uh, how to use those uh, uh, tools and there are some of the uh, issues if we have to deploy the same visualization technique on the akash tablet or uh, any other small screen devices so is there compatibility with that uh, device or there are issues so initially we'll see what is visualization it's uh, visualization is nothing new or it's uh, not a brand new technique it's just a way of uh, showing or expressing your concept your knowledge your uh, information through images through diagrams through animation so it's easy to tell uh, tell someone through diagrams rather if you show the whole data so it won't be uh, that much of uh, interest for uh, them and it's easy to uh, communicate your message your uh, knowledge your concept let's see for example uh, if an employee has to give a meeting to a bunch of people and uh, they are not that technical person so for them these kind of uh, details of data is of no use so rather we uh, show uh, this kind of data or rather if we just go and show this layout it's much more easy to grab much more easy to understand for everyone that okay it's let's suppose it's a financial data and it shows the up and down of the market uh, price uh, over the uh, year or monthly so this is visualization that how this one to one or uh, raw column data has been expressed in the form of a graph or a chart this is very normal or a typical way of expressing and it's more uh, a way or to express number data if we have some kind of other data so what are the different techniques so we'll see it later on and uh, we have seen that what actually uh, data visualization it's to explore the data uh, and able make able you to understand it easily and it's increase your interactivity with the data and your understandability so this is a conventional way uh, which which have uh, rows and uh, columns and uh, some of uh, some of the data that is uh, repeated and there is corresponding data but in the first look you won't understand that what kind of data it is it's one to one some linear uh, relation or either it's a, a tree like uh, data or uh, some uh, nesting is there and what these numbers are so it's uh, difficult to understand but if we just show this this layout then it's far easy to uh, understand to grab okay the data is a type of a hierarchy it's a tree and these are some of its categories let's suppose vehicles peoples and there are some others and there are sub nested uh, nodes within this so rather we explore one by one Uh, or read if you see in the previous one you need to go each row to find your relevant data but here you just directly go let's suppose you are looking for some cars just go into the category vehicles and you'll see cars and then there is category you don't need to see the other data and you don't need to worry about these what is um, uh, other data so it's one of the layout so what are the benefits first of all it's easy to understand in first glance at first look you can understand that okay it's a hierarchical data and this is the nesting then if it is a number data then you draw it you render it and then it shows uh, some kind of 
uh, patterns and that ha it helps you in uh, taking decisions ok let's suppose uh, this category may, uh, makes you money more uh, so you will spend more into this category rather you will go which is not beneficial for you so uh, it is easy to understand and may, it helps you in taking decisions and it is also helps in let us suppose if you draw the data like this it is some kind of um, uh, life uh, I mean unable to read it life expectancy versus literacy rate so over the period it is it it's render and then there is something fishy here so you see ok this 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 part is uh, more uh, you know you need to take care of so it's it actually shows a pattern that this the these area this era is of no use and make you you need to whatever change or whatever uh, your relevancy is is let's suppose on this part there are uh, mainly two kinds of data one is linear that is one to one relationship we have name and accordingly uh, a man name his id his address so there is no relation with the other ROS. but there are let's suppose there are hierarchical data where a these are a's and b is its children c is b's children like that so rather we'll express such kind of data in a tabular form if we'll go in this way it's more understandable so in the for, uh, in the uh, uh, coming slides we'll see some of the technique to show uh, innovative ideas to express uh, hierarchical data in in a way that you will be interact you will be able to interact with the data you will be able to uh, show more and more data and it is also uh, so we will have hierarchical data and then there are two main way of expressing this uh, in a layout one is the node link and uh, <coughs> in which you can see there is one node at the root and there are children's and there are subchildrens and leave node and it is a top down structure it can be from left to right but the point of uh, uh, to be noted here is that the root is at the top or at the leftmost and then children is accordingly uh, from the uh, to, towards bottom or towards right we can have another technique that is enclosure yeah, or is, is space filling technique in which we show the children or leaves within our main area the main area shows the root the head the starting point and the children or the sub node shows within this how it will work i will explain it later so initially we will cover what is connection your node link method the first one is the very conventional typical way of expressing that is root is at the top and there are children's which is uh, following the root then there is another way of expressing the same kind of structure that is a rectangular node link structure it is suited for a tree in which we have a let us suppose labeled leaf so we because it is give you more space so we can easily show names or whatever content we want to render so we will show like this it will give you more space it helps in a scale tree which has I mean which is la um, for larger trees then it is uh, same node link uh, structure but with a variation that the node is that the root is at the center and the leaf is uh, crossing the root from all around it 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 suited for the uh, structure which has more leaves because uh, then the tree would have more space to capture it's more suited for a network like a structure which is uh, you can say unrooted trees because every node is connected to any other node and so on so it's it can also be helpful in expressing the or in showing network data 
now we'll see some of the examples as uh, what the authors had uh, proposed over the year a lot of uh, work has been done on it and uh, we'll see some of uh, new and very innovative kind of layouts the first is the space tree it's been proposed by benjamin and jesse uh, what it does it's actually similar kind of a structure node is at the root uh, uh, the root is at the leftmost side and the tree is propagated towards the left the point of to be noted here is that so the thing you have to note here is that all the nodes is not expanded we have just expanded one node which is of relevance and we'll further explore it as we go along as we want to explore more and more it so this is uh, help in better utilization of the overall space if we rather ex expand whole of the node at a, at one time then it will be a cluster of whole the data and all the label has to sacrifice the space and then it will be very uh, clustered and very um, not readable properly so this is a technique go uh, go as you move uh, or through the tree and expand it and while you will explore the other one you can collapse again the the one the, which you have initially expanded so some of the benefits of such kind of a structure is that you have a better idea of the kind of a tree or kind of a structure or data it is it's easy to navigate through the tree and it's this structure the layout is very intuitive uh, anyone can understand okay you have to go this way then searching is very easy uh, because only the relevant data is shown to you and this image actually shows that how when you will expand the node which is here this triangular structure when you click on it it will expand like this so if we and see it's it has a lot of data so if we if we start exploring every one at same time it won't be readable so one by one we can explore it then there is a slight modification uh, to the previous one that is cone tree uh, it's proposed by card and george what they have done is like add a third dimension to the previous structure here we in a in the previous one you can see it's only the 2d kind of a structure but here we can in fact move the uh, move the leaves move the children of the uh, node and the, pre, the 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 one which is at the behind it can come and maybe it's of your use so it's helps in expressing and showing more data in comparison with the previous one it's actually use the center technique and the top down approach simultaneously and you can see it's a 3d kind of a structure then this technique hyperbolic tree or in short you can say hyper tree is uses the one which we have seen that in which the root is at the center uh, what uh, this kind of a structure does it's actually render the data on a hyperbolic plane which is 3d kind of a structure and then map that 3d structure on a 2d plane so here the benefit is only the data which is of use will have more space and it can utilize all this space and the one which is far uh, from the root or from the it's of no use for the time being you can uh, i mean it's at the far farther distance and it's more collapsible so when you click on it or drag it then it will expand so how it does because in the hyperbolic uh, geometry the parallel lines actually diverges and and so the children nodes have more space 
to show its children um, as compared to simple 2D uh, circle, circular structure. This structure is proposed by Lamping and Rao. <coughs> See this is uh, uh, an example of the hyperbolic tree. Uh, what it does, it's actually because of the hyperbolic structure, it accumulates exponential increase in the children nodes, uh, while in the normal 2D circular structure, only the linear increase with the increase of the radius, only the linearly increase nodes can be accommodated in the children, which is 2 raised to the power h, which is the height of the tree. The another technique is enclosure or a space filling technique. Uh, so I will briefly talk about how this, uh, is, uh, this structure works. The blue figure you can see, it is actually, it's actually the root node, the head node and it's, the size uh, can be calculated using the, all the sub nodes of this root node. So, it is actually the cumulative of all the sub nodes and this is the um, size of this blue space and then it shows that there are two children of this root node which is the uh, light blue cross kind of pattern and then each of these uh, sub, tree, uh, sub tree there is four, four, four children and then three children or three leaves or four leaves of these two children. So, what is the benefit of such kind of a structure? It is not though not very intuitive. Um, initially, you have to I mean grab it how it works and then only you can understand. But the benefit of this kind of a structure is that with the size you can easily with the area you can easily uh, express some of uh, the parameters like for example, you want to explain uh, the amount of, uh, for example, it is expressing uh, an article, then how much this article has been read. So, this shows the number, its popularity, so it will take a, more, a larger area and which has of uh, not that popular, so it will take a smaller area. So, it can uh, express numbers. So, there are uh, some of the techniques or the uh, layout that has been proposed, one is tree map. This, this node link structure had been, it has been rendered like this. So, how it does, the main node is the first one A116, A16, this is the main node and then there are three children, so it will divide the space like this B3 and then there is C3 and then the remaining part is assume that it is D10 because D10 has three sub nodes G2, H4 and this I4. So, this part you again assume G2 because G2 has node J1 and K1, so J1 and K1 has been shown here, H4 does not have any uh, leaf node. So, it will, it will uh, display here H4 and further the 4 leaf node of I4 is going is to represent here. So, here you notice that only the leaf label has been displayed and the children, uh, the parent of that node is not displayed. So, it is not uh, that convenient to understand. So, there are tools that uh, they have also displayed the parent node also. So, and then like for example, this triangle, uh, this rectangle and there is a slight bar and there you can express that it is D10 and then within D10 these are the sub nodes. So, this way you can add to this uh, diagram. So, now what are the benefits uh, of this kind of a structure? It is suited for a uh, for those kind of data which you want to display all the data at one time so you don't so you don't need uh, any scrolling or expansion 
but it's not suited for uh, traversing the tree because again you don't have proper idea uh, of okay this is the parent node because here it's it was a very small tree so i uh, we can ex explain it but if it's a very large tree then you won't be able to okay this is the sub node of uh, this parent tree so traversal and nesting level task is is not that easy and we also have uh, experimented it uh, on akash tablet and it's proved that it's very difficult to tell that how many levels of this uh, subtree and uh, um, what are the different children of this particular node which is quite easy with the uh, the one which we have covered before which is space tree or the hyperbolic tree some of the um, real life examples of tree map there is one website that is hive group they have actually display this is 100 itunes and they have listed it or displaying it based on its popularity so the size here that I, that we have discussed it's actually can capture any number kind of thing so the popularity is can be displayed through the size of the of that uh, itunes and then these different colors these different colors are shows that uh, their position in a chart uh, on 24 hour scale so let's suppose this green if you have seen this green kind of node here it shows that it's a new um, song new itune and this category is uh, based on uh, different genre of the songs so this is may, uh, maybe the sub sub trees you can say so here they have displayed uh, the name of the sub tree that we have discussed before then there is another example this is actually google news uh, so this application is being developed by marcos vasco Cam, what they have done it's these are the different different categories of the news and the size shows how many articles are within that um, this category of the news so um, size shows uh, the most read articles most read stories and the color shows uh, different types of uh, stories like for example financial news sports news um, or stock exchange news for example now the another technique of uh, space enclosure it's circle packing it's similar to tree maps but uh, here instead of showing the data on a rectangular uh, map rectangular screen will uh, here the data has been shown on the circular kind of uh, image so it's similar this uh, node is the root then there are sub trees and within the sub trees there are further leaf nodes here you can see there are wastage of space that is not the case in the tree maps but it's far more easy to read through the uh, structure because because of this wastage you can easily understand okay this is the sub node hence it can it can helps you in estimating the uh, number of trees a number of nodes in it again the size of the node shows the let's suppose file size or any other property which can capture numbers now there are some open source tool get available and uh, as a motivation for uh, you to explore those tool kits i have listed some of them here there is one uh, d3.js <coughs> these are different layouts that has been uh, uh, developed there so we can just go and see different uh, layout there 
these are some of the examples this is the circle packing that we have just seen this is some this is some kind of dummy data that they have expressed like this there are <coughs> you can explore many other techniques that are like sunburst so when we click on it it get expanded and then we we can read the whatever content in it now there is another toolkit javascript infovis uh, i have uploaded these two on the akash tablet uh, animation is a bit slower uh, if you compare with the desktop uh, environment but uh, we can optimize the code and we can uh, we can see if it's actually make difference or we just need to do something with the code this is the example of tree map this further expands and then maybe it can show us the whole uh, article then we click uh, we, can, we right click and then it goes back to it's uh, the shows the whole tree so these are very interesting uh, layouts and uh, we can try exploring these on uh, akash as well this is the hyperbolic example that we have seen that you can see these collapse a bit which is at the farther from the root and give you more space to display the one which is at the focus <coughs> this one is similar to a uh, space tree but it actually better utilize the space this is the root node and uh, these are the further sub nodes <coughs> and within this node they, th these are the further sub nodes so if we click on it it further expand and if there are sub hierarchy sub uh, node tree then it will show uh, based on your uh, if if you if you want to go further or not so it will keep on going like for example it goes and see there is no further data so it will stop it will show till here so this is the basic uh html5 canvas tag so we'll see how it, how we can use it i'll do it from the scratch open a text document name it canvas open the html tag then the head tag we'll write the script javascript we'll write here because we we can uh, explain or we can further um, add the events or animation in the canvas element canvas tag within this script we can also directly add but uh, i will show both the technique so initially we will show with the javascript so within the head tag we'll do that part then the main body part will where we'll add the the canvas element canvas is just an just a container and within it's like a as the name suggest canvas so it's it's a place where you just uh, draw your objects like circle rectangular object so it's a place it's it's nothing it's 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 actually it's not a shape it's a, just a provide you a space to draw so within body let's suppose we write a heading that it's a this is a canvas animation we'll add canvas tag
then we will set the width and the height of the that is space let us suppose let us say desktop so I will take width as 80 height is 400 I will set the id let us suppose my canvas now what I want is when the body of this html page loads which means when as soon as I click to the link when the page render then this animation should run. So, I should write the function on the on uh, load of the body. So, on load function I will call animate function and this function I can write in the javascript we will write the function keyword write the name of the function open the curly brackets and here we will define whatever we have to draw or okay so, in the javascript we have to actually uh, use the dom object and uh, we need to find or we need to refer the canvas element canvas tag that we have just defined in the html. So, what we will do we will define war which uh, and uh, some name variable some name and then document dot get element by id it is a way to refer the elements in the html and then whatever id we have given that is that it is my canvas I will use it this way it will access this html tag. <coughs> now, what I want to with this tag so initially uh, what I want is actually an image and I want that image to rotate 360 degree. So, it will kind of a uh, it will create a kind of a animation. So, let us suppose I call that image as pick and uh, new image I have created an image object and then within this object it is outside the function. So, it is global it can accessible I will use pick dot src and uh, this is the image I want to use. and I will call, call set interval method this method actually uh, perform the animation. So, I will call one function which which has to call every time this would be the callback function. So, let us suppose do animation is the function and I will set some interval after which it should call. this has to go this has to go in this in this so every time it will call my canvas object and do some drawing. So, some of the keywords that I uh, that we have to use Okay, I am just copying for the sake of time. This what does this object do? It is check if the canvas is supported. So, if it is supported, so it will return 1 and will come in the within this function. And then this line of code.
Okay. I'm writing the one. So canvas dot get uh, this method actually create a 2D dimension uh, kind of layout. We can also use 3D. So it's 2D. Then we'll add. These are some of the parameters that we need to set properties you can say fill a style uh, then a stroke a style then this method save each frame when whenever this canvas element call and at that position uh, what whatever the uh, state of that canvas it will save and then it will translate translate is it sh uh, shift to this parameter. I mean in y x y axis it will shift to 450 to 100 uh, parameter and then this will call rotate method it is take some angle. So, this is the calculation of some some angle this is angle and then convert it to radian and then divide by 6 and then for each second. So, multiply with that uh, seconds. So, it will rotate within each second and then this method actually draws the image pattern is the image that we want to display and this is the size of the image and restore it is a function which uh, takes the last state of the canvas. So, save every time whatever the canvas state is put uh, push it on the stack and restore while rendering the new canvas state it at first restore the previous one and then um, uh, re uh, render the another one. So, it is like an animation the previous one will be there and then creates a new one. So, I will just run it here how it does like this. So, this is the image and I am rotating it with some angle that we have explained here and with this with this it is kind of shifting through an angle like this. Similarly, we can also do with the SVG tag I will just want to give an idea how easily we can do that. Uh, this is SVG tag open and close and then this is another tag circle in the ca uh, canvas we have used image. So, we uh, instead we can draw our own objects. So, for example, circle and we have draw a circle and then there are two separate functions. So, I will just show one at a time. This is this animate transform built in function for this SVG and what it does it is actually take these parameters and it will show it will create animation. So, how it will does? So, it revolving like this this is the duration uh, these are the parameter that sets the position of this circle and if if I let us suppose add this is another built in uh, attribute what it does it is take the circle attribute r which is the radius and then changes its value to 80 150 and then again 80. So, it will make this kind of an effect it grows and it is So, the toolkit we have discussed uses these two uh, HTML5 tags. So, I wanted to give you some idea of how it works. Thanks a lot.